Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome to another Making Stuff video. I've been working on that CNC plasma cutter and I do have it making first cuts. And I've also been doing a lot of just little piddly things to it. So let me just spin the camera around and I'll show you what I've done. All right, so here's one of those little off camera jobs that I've done and it's just cleaning these wires up. This is the Y axis wire and I've put these little clamps on here and then ran the wire through uh, the tube over to the other side of the machine. I did just have this wire just drag in the ground and run over to the computer. So this is just one of those little things that it's gotta be done to finish the machine, but it's not really that exciting to show it in the video. So here is another off camera job that I've done and I've added this little piece of plastic. It's some quarter inch plastic I had on hand. So I decided just to use it. Um, I can cut it on the table saw. So I just ripped two pieces here and it's just a little splash guard that covers the linear rail and the bearings here and it keeps water and dust from the torch from accumulating on this rail and the bearing. Okay, so it's time to add the plasma cutter to this CNC machine and what I am using is a Harbor Freight plasma cutter. Uh, as far as I know, they only make one plasma cutter so this is the one that I'm using and the way I'm gonna mount it to the Z-axis is I've made this plate here and then I've put this 3D printed part onto the plate. And it's just the collar and there's two screws here and uh, this is loose. So what it does is it, it just clamps around this round part of the torch right here. So I put the torch in here and then just tighten these screws up. There's a captured nut in that 3D printed part. And it, this actually holds the torch on there quite well. Um, I was kind of shocked how well it stayed in there, but it, it's in there good. I mean, it's not gonna come out and uh, it holds it in there nice and snug. So uh, we're gonna see how well this works. I've done some of that same wire clean up here on this side, and I wanna put a piece of drag chain on here. And instead of 3D printing one, I just went and bought uh, a larger piece that can handle all these cables and the plasma cable because the 3D printed uh, cable, the drag chain just wasn't really working right here. So I've ordered that, it was less than $20. So I, I figured that'd be better than just trying to spend the time and make something uh, and 3D print it. All right, I've also put this mount right here. I'm gonna mount the monitor here and then put a little tray with the computer keyboard and mouse right below it and then it'll be on an articulating arm, then that way I can move the keyboard and monitor around to whatever orientation I need it when I'm using the machine. So let me tell you a little bit about the computer that's going on this machine. This is a 4U rack mounted case and I put everything in here. I put the stepper motor controller, the relay board, the power supplies, everything's in here because I wanted a clean install on this. I didn't want a lot of wires and cables running all over the place. And so what I did is I took the CD drives and everything out of the front and I put this panel on here and I mounted my fuses and the power switch for the stepper motors. And so that's the front. So let me walk around here to the back and I will show you the back of the machine. And here on the back, I have taken these stepper motor cables and I have put these plugs on here. Don't know if you can see that. But these plugs, they, they'll only go in one way and then they screw in and lock in place when they're in there. I've also run the uh, parallel port cable that runs the motion controller board. I've run it through here and I cut a little slot in this plate and that allows for this cable to run inside and then I've also got this cable here, which is temporary. Uh, this one runs the plasma cutter. It's what turns it on and off, but I'm going to get some more pl uh, plugs like these and put them here in this little blank area. And that will let me disconnect the plasma cutter from the computer and it won't be permanently tethered to it. So now let's take a peek inside the computer and I will show you, I've got the transformer, the capacitor and the bridge rectifier. This is for the powering of the stepper motors. I've got that located here in the front of the case. Then over here, I've got the stepper motor driver board and controller board. 
and that's mounted over here and there's a 120 millimeter fan in here that blows a tremendous amount of air over the heat sink and the rest of the board to keep it cool. This is the relay board. There's three relays here. This one controls the plasma cutter. It turns it on and off. And these other two relays are going to control the proximity sensors, which I don't have hooked up right now. But when I do get some more plugs to put on this panel that I made, uh, I'm going to have all of this stuff hooked up. And then I've got the motherboard and the power supply for the computer, which all of that's just standard. I didn't do anything to that. Uh, the only thing I added on the computer part was another parallel port. I added a second uh, parallel port because I want to do some more things with this machine that requires more input-output pins, and I pretty much just about reached the limit of what I can do with this board here with the input-output pin. So this will let me do some more thing, future projects and things with this machine. I had that entire can of uh, liquid rubber in a can, the Flex Seal stuff, and I just decided to go ahead and spray it all in the pan here because I don't have any other use for it and I'd probably just throw it away. So uh, hopefully that'll help the pan last a little longer and keep it from rusting out. I've got Linux CNC all set up for the first test cut and I'm using the evaluation software of sheet cam right now and so the only thing I could find that was small enough was this Cummins logo so we're going to try and cut that out for our first cut so let's see how it works. Alright, so here is that first cut, and for me just guessing at the settings, 75 inches a minute at 40 amps, I think it did pretty good. Now you can see a little bit, I think it got just a little too hot or running a little too slow because you can see on the eye here, instead of square, it's kind of rectangle shaped, and on the back it does look like it may have got a little hot in a few places. So that was 75 at 40 amps. So on the second cut, I decided to dial it down a little bit and I went 75 inches at 30 amps and that did a whole lot better. Um, you can see the dot on the eye is more square, doesn't look like it got quite as hot. There is some dross on the back, but um, I think if I put some water in the pan, that'll help cut back on that. But I mean, it made really clean cuts and everything for, this is the second cut. And I, like I said, I was just guessing at the settings. So then I decided let's dial it back just a little bit more. And I did 75 inches at 25 amps. And you can see there that now we're kind of starting to lose some of the quality, like the top of the M's uh, along this edge of the C here. It's not quite as crisp. So I don't think, uh, I, don't, I don't think it was either I was running too fast or not hot enough and since I've been messing with the amps then I, I think it's not hot enough. So I think right now the optimal setting would be 75 inches at 30 amps. Now I'm going to start playing with the inches per minute setting and I'm going to see what I can get and see if I can't dial this in a little bit better. But I mean just for guessing at the settings and I mean this is the first cut, um, I think it did pretty good. So now I've come to the point in the project I've been dreading for a long time, and that is taking the whole thing apart and painting it. 
So I'm going to be working on that. I'm going to be working on finishing up a few other little things on it. I'm also going to dial it in. So hopefully by the time the next video rolls around, we will be making some cool stuff with this machine. If you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up and subscribe. And if you haven't already done so, click that bell so you get notified of future making stuff videos. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.